After losing the season opener in Miami, the Patriots beat the Vikings handily in week two, but barely uh, beat the Raiders. Now the 37-year-old's game is being questioned, and his teammates refuse to entertain any slippage when it comes to one Tom Brady. Here's a quote. You can go to practice and see it for yourself. He's not washed up. He works hard like he always has. I haven't seen any change from when I got here until now. To me, if anything, he's more of a leader now than he has been. Uh, you may remember uh, Brady lost his guard, Logan Makins, and the Pats' longtime offensive line coach retired just before the season. Perhaps some of the reasons for the struggle. But here's the question. Is Tom Brady on the decline? Skip Bayless. Jerome, Stephen A., it's a tough question for me. Stephen A. knows how much I love me some Tom Brady, and I've often, for, for many years on this show, said he's the best quarterback in football. But Stephen A., I'm going to have to admit publicly today, this is how concerned I am about Tom Brady at this point in the season. I'm so concerned that I'm going to say publicly, I'm not sure if he's in decline. I'm going to speak with my head over my heart on this one. And I know we've talked about Aaron Rodgers this week. What's wrong with him? And I'm going to be just as cold-bloodedly objective as I was on Aaron Rodgers on Tom Brady. Stephen A., you were the first to bring up the day after Tom Brady and company lost the AFC Championship game in Denver. Tom Brady had a bad day. He had, by his standards, a terrible day. The numbers don't look that bad, but he missed two or three throws that were game changers and just flat out missed the throws. So now I see the stat that Tom Brady is the worst in the league on accuracy to this point through three games. 27% of his passes are termed missed throws so far. That's under throws or over throws. 27%. We're talking about Tom Brady here. So that makes his QBR, again, scale of 0 to 100, 24th out of the 35 eligible quarterbacks. Pretty awful by Tom Brady standards. He hasn't thrown an interception yet. I got that going for me. Only three touchdown passes. So now we get to excuses or valid excuses. Is it the offensive line without Logan Mankins? The day the trade went down, I said, wow, I'm, uh, this scares me to death. But in Belichick, I trust. Well, I think it's a big loss in leadership, if nothing else, in the offensive line. And I said it from the start of the year. They miss LeGarrette Blunt. He, he was a boss for them last year. He was a drop-the-hammer closer for them. Fourth quarter at 250 pounds, you went about that range, right? You could hand it to this guy, and he just mauled defenses. And if they, they couldn't tackle him, he, he can run. He could fly. So, so they lost that element with Stephen Ridley is, is not LeGarrette Blunt in the fourth quarter. So I get all that, but I still say... Tom Brady, by his standards, has been awful this year. And it started in the second half at Miami. They don't protect him. He's been beat up. He got hit six, seven good times, you know, hard times by the Raiders in Foxborough. And it shook me up watching it. But, but still, when it was time to make a throw, he's throwing it to Julian Edelman. Is he a number one receiver? Well, he is for them. And, and I, I keep asking, what happened to LaFell? What happened to Ken Brell? What happened to Aaron Dobson? I don't know. I don't know. Where's Gronkowski? He's been catching three balls or so a game, but he's not Gronk yet. So are those valid excuses? I'm, I'm going to say right now, I'm going to wait and see. They're at Kansas City Monday night, then they got Cincinnati, they have to go to Buffalo, they got the Jets, they got Chicago, they got Denver coming up. We're about to find out. I'm going to, my gut feeling is he will turn back into Tom Brady, but at this moment, I can't say that for a fact. All right. Well, I went back and looked at uh, some of the throws that he missed. And, and, and really going back, looking at Tom Brady, what I saw was a quarterback under duress. Okay. And when, when he had an opportunity to stand in the pocket, okay, with no pressure, he made the throws that he needed to make. Now, there was one or two that, that kind of sailed on him, got over. And those were the longer passes to the sidelines. That, that, they have a tendency to do that at times. But when you look at Tom Brady, what he is is the prototypical pocket pass passer. He moves in the pocket. He does. He's not mobile. Okay, so when you have a quarterback that's able to move in the pocket, i.e., uh, Peyton Manning, Manning as well, when when that pocket becomes eroded, then they're going to struggle. There's no way around it. A and so so this is nothing new when you look at in the scope of things. The, the, what's new is the Patriots' offensive line eroding. 
that's the difference here. That's what we haven't seen in years. And, and the moves that they've made in terms of the Patriots front office, I think, has put Tom Brady in this position okay. where he's uncomfortable in the pocket. You can see it. There was one point in the game, Khalil Mack uh, in Oakland Rays game, hit him, in his, hit, hit him in his back. I mean, just flush. I saw it. It changed mm -hmm. his outlook on that football sure. game. Yeah. He became a different quarterback. And that's not unlike any other quarterback in the NFL. When you get pressure and you're under duress, you change your mechanics. You get a little bit quicker. You saw a couple passes. He threw a little quicker. Kind of he, he let, lets them go in the dirt. Yep. But but that is a a product of the offensive line not giving him the time that he needs more than any quarterback probably the NFL he needs protection to be effective to be the guy that he's always been. All right. That's so so you're saying with protection he's still with Tom protection Brady. he's still Tom Brady. But, but I will say this. But I will say this. <laughs> yeah. His skill set is diminishing sure. as all of these quarterbacks as they get older your skill set is going to diminish 37 all right exactly Peyton Manning has been the only one to defy yeah, he's those odds but guess what he's had the protection yeah. and we saw when he didn't have the protection in the Super Bowl what happens yeah. all right okay. Stephen A so bus says skill set may be diminishing but he really doesn't have any protection uh is Tom Brady on the decline in your opinion I think this entire conversation is incredibly insulting to Tom Brady. And even though I'm one that was quick to say Aaron Rodgers is a bad man and he's not better, um, that Tom Brady is not better than him, I still appreciate and recognize the greatness of a Tom Brady, and I don't think I've seen a decline. What I see is an individual that is not being protected. Logan Mankins is also gone, your left guard. He's in Tampa now. That didn't help matters. You look at him last week against Oakland. He targeted Julian Edelman. I'm sorry, he, Julian Edelman had 10 catches. Lord knows how many times he was targeted. Gronkowski only had three passes. Kembrell Tompkins, we can't find him. Dobson, we're not really finding him. LaFell was supposed to be a welcomed addition. Not much going on there either. Whether it's Ridley or Vereen, the running game ranks 22nd. The passing game ranks 27th. Okay, when I look at the Patriots, I'm thinking along the lines of an organization, first class all the way. We all know how I feel about Mr. Kraft, but Bill Belichick and the Patriots organization, because of the greatness of Tom Brady, one could argue in my estimation that they have taken him for granted for far too long. Just look at this stat here, Skip. Last year, lowest passer rating since 2003. 87.3. Fewest touchdowns thrown since 2006, 25. But the Patriots still managed to finish third in the NFL in scoring at 27.8 points per game. Vincent Wolfolk went down. All right, Gerard Mayo went down. All right, you didn't have, you know, these guys available to you. What happened? Akeem Tlaib ultimately was in and out in terms of his injury-prone self. What happened? Tom Brady picked up the slack. When we look at the New England Patriots, outside of Randy Moss, they have never really had an elite receiver, yet somehow, some way, every single season, with the exception of one after their first Super Bowl, Tom Brady has led them to double-digit victories every single season he was healthy. Even the year he was out, they went 11-5 and five with Matt Castle, the quarterback, believe it or not. But Tom Brady is the man. And so when I look at it, I'm saying... What are you talking about, Rick, the declining skills? Is he being protected? To me, you have to gauge what Tom Brady brings to the table when you have the requisite parts around him. Even when he didn't have elite receivers before, guys, he was still protected. And so as a result, Tom Brady could stand in the pocket and do his thing. Let's see how good Drew Brees would be, Peyton Manning would be, along with the others, if they had the minimal level of protection that Tom Brady has enjoyed. Aaron Rodgers is different because he can scramble and move out the pocket and still rifle that football on the run. But by and large, pocket passers need protection. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the combination of not being protected well enough and guys not getting open as much as they should in order for Tom Brady to do his thing. That's Stephen, what I see. Stephen A., he was targeted 13 times. Julian Edelman was in that game so, against the Raiders. So, Terry, now yes. we have had role reversal on this show. I see. Because You're like once him. Stephen A. Smith 
has picked the New England Patriots not to just get to the Super Bowl, but to win this year's Super Bowl. He has declared the Patriots yes. America's team, yes. not the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. And you no longer hear from him what we often heard as a constant refrain on this show. Tom Brady tap dances better than the late, great Gregory Hines. We don't hear that anymore. We hear only defense of Tom Brady that he's not in How the How do you line. feel about that? It, it shakes me up. It makes me nervous. Why? Because I want the that's Patriots to the win moment. it all. That's just for the, that's just for the moment. Bus. How you feel? He could tap dance. I, I, and, and listen, he he does tend to tap dance. I stand oh, but, by that. Yeah, of course. But I'm not going to accuse him <laughs> of, of having declining yeah. skills. Of course. But you don't think he has declining skills. It's about protection. The same thing. It's, a, it's about protection. He's still uh, as good as he's ever been. And if they protect him, he will still get the job done like he's always has. So cheer up. That's right. Cheer He'll up, still Bayless. eat you up. He'll cheer eat you up. up. Somebody's actually <laughs> honest on this panel. <laughs> Me. Um, <laughs> joining us a little later on will be uh, Jerome Bettis. We appreciate you starting the Thank show you. with us this Thank morning. You. Coming up next, the captain didn't make it.